typically at uh, most power plants we will have an intermediate storage tank. Uh, the bulk tanks may be near the power plant or they may be at another location in the community and we generally will have a storage tank that's dedicated to the power plant. This gets filled periodically every month, every couple months and then it provides the fuel to the day tank inside of the power plant. Here we have a typical day tank. It stores the fuel that runs directly to the generators. Associated with the day tank is a control panel. This control panel runs the fill functions. It also has alarm functions. We'll get into that in more detail later. Uh, these are the pumps that are used for filling the day tank. And then over here is the meter. This records all the fuel that is uh, transferred from the intermediate tank into the day tank. And this is how we keep our record of fuel consumption for the day tank. Now associated in this plant with the day tank is a used oil blending system. Here we have a used oil hopper. Uh, used oil from the engines is pumped into the storage reservoir. The filters are placed in here to drain the used oil in. Then the used oil is blended, is filtered through this filter rack and then mixed in with the oil in the day tank so it can be burned on site and used. Then associated with the whole day tank system we have the fuel oil piping. There are valves at the day tank that control the fuel and then there are piping mains that run down the wall and branch off to each engine. And each individual engine has separate valving so they can be isolated when we have to service that engine or take it offline. So that's the basic heart of the fuel system. We'll go into more detail on it in a later section. Okay, a typical power plant will have three or four engine generator sets. This is just a very standard, normal engine generator set. Associated with each uh, engine, it'll have an individual battery, an individual charger, and then uh, coming off of the engine we'll have coolant piping. Uh, there's branch piping with individual valves going into a main, and then those mains go down to the radiators in the radiator room. Here we have a pair of radiators that are used to uh, dissipate the heat from the engines. Associated with those radiators is an expansion tank. That's the reservoir of glycol that is uh, stored and uh, expands and contracts as the temperature goes up and down. And then each radiator has a separate control panel. These are variable speed drives that will match the speed of the radiator to the amount of heat it has to reject. Then on some power plants, we'll have heat recovery. In this case, we do. We have a heat recovery system, this heat exchanger, and all the pumps are associated with a system to capture heat from the jack of the engines and then distribute it to an adjacent building where it can be used for heat. We also have some plant heating. So here's a typical unit heater. This comes off the heat recovery system, provides heat for the control room. In the generation room, we have to have a ventilation system to take care of the heat that's put out by the generators. So here we have a couple of air intake ducts. On top of these, we have filters that cut down on the bugs and the dust coming into the room to keep it clean in here. And then over by the generators, we have exhaust fans that take the hot air and blow it out of the building. And each exhaust fan has a thermostat that cycles the fan on and off to maintain a reasonable temperature in the room. Most modern power plants have some kind of a fire suppression system. This plant has uh, gaseous fire suppression. It's got a compressed gas in here that extinguishes the fire, and so it's stored under pressure in these cylinders. Then we have piping for the discharge of it. The piping is generally painted red to distinguish it as being associated with the fire suppression system. Then we also have the wiring for the fire suppression and it'll typically have red covers on the junction boxes to separate it from the other wiring in the plant. And then associated with the fire suppression we have uh, detectors, various kinds, heat and flame detectors. We have alarms and then in the control room we have a control panel that's the heart of the fire suppression system. This is the fire suppression control panel. It supervises all of the uh, flame and heat detectors and in the event of an actual fire, it issues a signal to discharge the agent, sounds the alarm. Associated with it is a manual pull station. In the event of a fire, uh, the operator can actually activate the fire suppression system. And then we also have the yellow button is an abort station that basically puts a 30 second delay on the system if, if it's accidentally tripped and we want to uh, stop it before it discharges the agent. Okay, we're in the control room and we're looking at the switch gear. 
Typically there would be a section of switch gear associated with each generator. So in this case we have four generators. We have four sections of generator switch gear. The upper portion is the low voltage control wiring. The lower portion has the 480 volt generation wiring along with the uh, circuit breaker or contactor for each individual engine. Then down at the end of the switch gear, we have the master section. This is where all of the uh, main control of the system goes, the load sharing, uh, all of our metering for the power that's consumed and, and sent out to the community, and the main breaker for sending power out to the community. Okay, the last major portion of the power plant we're going to cover is the station service. That's the electrical uh, system for all of the lights and pumps and everything inside of the power plant. Here we have a, a transformer. This steps down the 480 volt power to a 12208 volt. Then we have a load center here with the circuit breakers in it for all the different circuits in the building. Okay, on the station service power system, we typically use a red lighted pilot switch to indicate circuits that are normally on. So anything such as a battery charger, ventilation fan, heaters uh, that are just left on all the time will have the red pilot light and that indicates you have power to that circuit. It's left on unless you have to turn it off to service something.